They say you can't have your cake and eat it too, but when it comes to international football, you can't have your teams and play for them too, unless you're Diego Costa to find a loophole in the system and play for not one, but two different national teams. Unlike club football, where players can switch teams and allegiances as often as they change their socks, representing a national team is a bit more complex. We start with the man of the moment, Bukayo Saka. But how could Saka even consider playing for a team other than England? He was born and raised in England. He's represented England at multiple cadet levels, including the World Cup, and he's never even visited Nigeria. So it's safe to say that his connection with Nigeria is tenuous at best. But let's not forget that Saka's parents are Nigerian, which makes him eligible to play for the Super Eagles. And let's be real, who wouldn't want Saka in their team? He's a talented youngster who's already making waves at Arsenal. But well, it looks like Saka made his decision and it's not that surprising. He's chosen to play for England, the country that he calls home. Sorry Nigeria, but it looks like you're going to have to find another talented young player to add to your team. But don't worry, I'm sure there's someone out there who's just as good as Saka. Okay, maybe not just as good, but near enough. Closer to Saka's dressing room, Gabriel Martinelli also had the privilege to say hi to two international teams. The dude could have played for Italy, but he's choosing Brazil instead. Technically, he could still switch to Italy, as long as he hasn't played four matches for Brazil. But don't worry, Gabriel's not going anywhere. He confirmed in an interview that he's sticking with Brazil and that Italy never really approached him. Italy looks like you'll have to find someone else to make pizza and pasta with. Martinelli's going to be living his samba dreams with Brazil. Elsewhere, Haaland might be bragging in front of his teammates for having the chance to further showcase his skills for multiple national teams. The Norwegian striker could have actually played for England if he wanted to. That's right, he was born in Leeds during his dad's stint at Elland Road, though he was eligible to play for the Three Lions. He may have left England at a young age, but he's always felt a deep connection to his Norwegian roots. And let's be honest, can you even imagine Haaland playing for England? It just wouldn't be the same. The guy is a Viking warrior on the pitch. He was made to wear the red and blue of Norway. Plus, we all know how much he loves to score goals and celebrate with that iconic scream. But the next guy had the opportunity to go to not one, not two, but three national teams. Let's be fair, that's absolutely brilliant, given the fact that some can't even get into playing 11 of even one team. Ansu Fati was born in Guinea-Bissau, making him eligible to represent his birth country. But hold on to your sombreros because he's also been living in Spain since he was six, playing for top clubs like Sevilla and Barcelona. In fact, he's been living there for so long that he was granted Spanish citizenship by royal decree. Can you imagine that? But wait, he could also have joined CR7's Portugal. That's right, folks. Guinea-Bissau, a former Portuguese colony, also had a special arrangement for acquiring citizenship. But despite having these tempting options, Fatty made up his mind and chose to stay in Spain. Maybe he just really likes paella or flamenco dancing, who knows? Or maybe he just thought it was better to go with a team that has a better chance at winning the World Cup? Speaking of Spain, they are good at getting players under the nose of other countries. Costa, ring a bell? And now it appears that we have another case, the case of Alejandro Garnacho. The United guy got the best of both worlds when it comes to football nationality. He's eligible to play for Argentina through his mother, but he was actually born in Spain and even played for their under-18 team. However, it looks like he's set on representing the land of Messi as he switched over to Argentina's under-20 squad. And get this, even Spain tried to get him back in their side. That's right, they wanted him to switch back to the Spanish team, but Garnacho was having none of it. According to Bernardo Romeo, coordinator of the Argentine national youth teams, Garnacho is totally convinced about playing for Argentina. And if you need more proof, just go to his house and you'll see photos of him with Messi all over the place. Two years ago, another guy had to cherry pick from two options. Meet Jamal Muziala, born in Stuttgart to a German mother and British Nigerian father. He moved to England at the age of seven when his mum started studying at the University of Southampton. After playing for regional side Central City, Chelsea spotted his talent and he moved to London to study at Whitgift School. During his eight years with the Blues, he blossomed as an attacking midfielder before returning to Germany two years ago to join Bayern. Representing England from the under-15s to the under-21s, Muziana caught the eye of Gareth Southgate, who was keen for him to play for the England senior squad. But the decision wasn't easy for the youngster, who was torn between playing for England or Germany, the country of his birth. In the end, after talks with Joachim Löw, Muziana decided to represent Germany. It was a tough call, but one he felt he had to make. Another one to let go of his African team is Eduardo Camavinga, who was born in Angola to Congolese parents, but grew up in France and has spent most of his life there. He holds French citizenship and has represented France at youth level since the under-16s. As a result, 
he was eligible to play for France's senior team and that is the team he has chosen to represent. Likewise, Callum Hudson-Odoi rejected the chance to play at the Qatar World Cup with Ghana, the home of his parents. Moving to Germany, we have an example of determination. Alfonso Davis was born in a refugee camp in Ghana, but his family immigrated to Canada when he was five years old. He became a soccer player and made history by playing for the Vancouver Whitecaps at just 15 years old. He then moved to Bayern Munich in Germany and has been very successful there. Even though he could have played for Ghana, he chose to play for Canada and made history as the youngest player to play for the Canadian national team. Talk about the pro level and you'll hear the name of the rising star of German football, Karim Adeyemi. At only 20 years old, he's already making waves in football world. Born to a Nigerian father and a Romanian mother in the heart of Munich, Adeyemi has made a name for himself and he did choose his parents' countries. Instead, he chose Germany. Adeyemi's father moved to Germany in the 1990s to pursue his own football dreams and it seems that his son has followed in his footsteps. After playing for Germany at all age levels, Adeyemi made his senior team debut in a World Cup qualification match against Armenia in September 2021. Keep your eyes on Adeyemi, he's sure to be a player to watch in the coming years. While you're at it, please like the video if you enjoyed it. Also subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any videos we post.